All right, welcome back to the um, possible c possible conclusion to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. This is the wait. Actually, this is probably not the last episode because we still have another episode after this. So, and I don't know how much time we have left. No, I don't know. No, I don't know how much time? I don't know how much. Uh, I don't know how long this episode is. But anyway, here is the night of the murder. I fell asleep for a little, for about an hour, so just gotta shake off the sleepiness here. Try to keep on my schedule. All right. <clears throat> it was the night of the twenty-fourth, just after midnight. Uh, yep. I was uh, in the restaurant where I um, rent boats as usual. Then I heard a bang. Uh, yep. Then I looked out the window and I saw a boat just floating on the lake then I heard another bang just about then the boat comes back to shore and a man walks by my window so I, better, I guess I better press everything I can before I present anything okay just after midnight just after midnight you say uh, yep just around then are you sure I'm pretty sure, yep. When I talked to you yesterday, you were rather vague about the time. I'm surprised you seem so sure about it today. Hmm. Oh, he's asleep now. Oh. I, I asked him, and he remembered. Isn't that right? Uh, oh. Oh, so. Uh, don't glare at me like that. I, uh, I remembered it clearly. I did. Yep. You see? Continue. Uh, I was in a restaurant where I uh, rent boats as usual. Is there anyone who can verify that? Uh, well, I guess Polly could. That's not good enough for a court of law. Mr. Wright, exactly what's not good enough? Uh, your honor, this Polly is a parrot. A parrot? Don't be so hard on the girl, Keithy boy. Keith? Oh. The prosecution concedes that we cannot prove the witness was in the shop. Witness, please continue. Then I heard a bang, yep. And where did did the bang seem to come from? Uh, oh, he's he's a little more co coherent uh, during this trial, because like in the boat shop he was just all sorts of messed up. Here he's well, well he's still swaying back and forth, but he's able to be more. Well, like he's he's a little more level-headed here for some reason. From the f from the lake, I figure. Are you certain? Uh, yep. Good. Continue. When I looked out the window, I saw a boat just a floating on the lake. Was there someone in the boat? Uh, it was pretty far out there. Couldn't see clearly. Plus, I was drunk out of my mind. But I figured that there was two men out there. Yup. I haven't had a solid number two in years. But you couldn't see them clearly. Uh, yup. At the time, that is. At the time. What? Then I heard another bang. So you heard, so you heard two gunshots total. Uh, yup. That's what Lotta said in her testimony yesterday. Just about then, the boats come back to the shore and a man walks by my window. By your window? Yep, by my window, right outside the window of my little shack. And could you see the man's face? Well, the fog was pretty darn thick, but he was right there in front of me. I, I saw him. 
This is a rather important detail. Please add it to your testimony. I have a bad feeling about this. That man was the defendant. He was saying, I can't believe he's dead. Hold it. Hold up. Are you sure? Yeah. Uh-oh. Dad. <laughs> oh. Dead certain, Keith. He said, I can't believe he's dead. As, as he was walking by, too. Witness, are you sure that this person you saw was Miles Edgeworth? It was him. That Edgeworth boy. Oh. Hmm. This sounds like decisive evidence indeed. <sighs> I see no room for doubt. Von Karma. He lured me into cross-examining so he could set me up for a fall. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Nick, I don't like the way things are going here. Everyone in the courtroom is glaring at us. I better act quick or this trial is going to be over. Raise an objection. Your Honor, we proved in yesterday's court that it could not have been Edgeworth who fired that gun. Oh, Mr. Wright, are you referring to the fingerprints from Edgeworth's right hand found on, on the gun? And the photograph showing the man firing with his left hand? Exactly. Naughty, naughty. That is easily explainable. He could have wiped his prints after he fired. You are ignoring the truth of the matter here. Everything this witness's testimony is true. Hmm. The judge is lost in thought. What should I do? Raise an objection. Your Honor, this witness claims that Edgeworth said, I can't believe he's dead, but his word is all we have. If he were telling a lie, oh, Mr. Wright, in a court of law, the evidence tells all. Apparently, you have yet to realize this as a, even this basic fact. If you say his testimony is a lie, show us proof. Uh, Nick. Do we have evidence? It's no good. There's nothing I can do. Are you sure? To be honest, I don't know what to do anymore. Please. Can you hear me, sis? Please. We need your help. Nick needs you. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Three minutes perhaps too high in expectation. However, 15 minutes isn't bad. This must be a new record. Enough. The witness may leave the stand. Ugh. This court sees no reason to prolong the trial, nor is there any need for any more time to decide the case against the defendant. This case is extremely clear. No, this case is extremely clear. I see no room for misinterpretation of the facts. What? No. Hmm. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Oh, guilty. Oh, I guess I didn't, uh... The accused will surrender the court immediately to be held pending trial at a higher court within a month of today's date. That is all. The court is adjourned. I guess I, um... Wait! Oh. Uh, who was that just now? Me! Huh? What? Larry! Oh, Larry to the rescue. What are you doing here? Listen, you, you gotta listen to me. I, uh, I was... I was there in the park the night of the murder. I wasn't sure about it until yesterday, just yesterday. But today, I, I remembered it. Remembered what? The gunshot. I heard it too. Hmm. Order. What is the... No, what is the meaning of this? The verdict has been decided. I call for adjournment. One moment, Mr. Von Karma. So you say you heard a gunshot? Yeah, I did. 
a gunshot that night. I was little. I was sitting here in the audience listening to the testimony. Then I realized something he said was different from what I remember. Uh, anyhow, I, ca I can't just sit here and let you call Edgy a murderer. It's, it's just not right. I'll testify. Let me testify. Order, order. Well, this is the first time something has happened like this in my court. I'm not quite sure how to proceed. Judge, you've already given your decision. The trial is over. Nick, this is it. Larry's giving us one final chance at this. She's right. If only it wasn't Larry. He could make things even worse. Mr. Edgeworth was just declared guilty, Nick. It doesn't get any worse. You're right. Okay. Your Honor, if there's another witness, it is our duty to hear him speak. Right here, right now. A waste of time. The verdict cannot be overturned. Hmm. Allow me to speak my opinion. In all court proceedings, it is our duty to prevent an inaccurate verdict. In order to make sure no mistake has been made, every witness should be heard. W what is this? I withdraw my previous verdict of guilty. Wow. Mr. Von Karma, I order you to call this new witness to testify. Now. What? The court will adjourn for five minutes recess. After that, we will hear this new witness. Court is adjourned. So I don't know if I should save or not. Is this the right... Is this... Is this the right thing to do? Whew. That was too close. Sorry to keep you on the edge of your seat like... No. I thought he was speaking at first. Sorry to keep you on the edge of your seat like that, Edgeworth. Huh. I seen worse. Yeah, right, Edgeworth. You're sweating bullets. I just wonder what Larry plans to say in there. Larry was at the lake that night. Yes. He said he went looking for the steel samurai balloon that flew into the lake. Oh, right. And he found the balloon in the air tank that night. <sighs> oh. And he found the balloon in the air tank that night? Yeah. Hmm. Hey, Edgeworth. Hmm? Huh? You see something right? Yeah, a lot of things. You seem out of it. What's wrong? It... it's nothing. Hmm. Um, Mr. Edgeworth, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. What's that? Why are your fingerprints on the murder weapon? Oh. When he fell into the lake, I went into a daze. I couldn't understand what had happened. I couldn't think straight. Then I saw the pistol lying on the floor of the boat in front of me. I picked it up without thinking. I didn't have a reason, really. What were you doing out in the boat? I see. Right. Yeah? This might be our chance. Our chance? Von Karma has only ever run perfect trials. Perfect trials? Perfectly prepared witnesses, perfectly complete evidence. That's the secret to his success. This is the first time he's ever had to deal with something unexpected. He has let someone he hasn't even talked to testify before in the court. No, he has... I can't gotta say this. <laughs> he has let someone he hasn't even talked to to testify before the court. And that someone is Larry. What are you getting at? It's likely his testimony will be full of holes, right? That's right, Nick. No ten-minute trial this time. We'll milk, milk this one for all it's worth. Hey, it was fifteen minutes. Fifteen. Everything depends on Larry now. Okay. December 27, 10.35 a.m. District Court, courtroom number three. Court is now back in session. Witness. 
please testify to the court about everything that you saw on the night of December 24th. Right, leave it to me. Please, Larry, don't mess this one up. Or maybe do mess it up so I can unpin it off of uh, Edgeworth. I hate to admit it, but you're our last chance. Hmm. Von Karman didn't even have time to prep his witness. I just hope Edgeworth is right about this being our big break. Witness testimony. Night of the murder. That night, I was out in the boat on the lake. I was looking for something, uh, I uh, found it. So I quietly slipped the boat back at, in at the rental shop dock. Then I, then as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. Oh, that, that's a new expression I never seen uh, Larry do before. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't notice the boat. So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. Hmm. That was an unusually vague testimony, even for this court. In, in, in any matter, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. What's wrong, Nick? It's Larry. I have no idea what he's going to say if I press him. I'm a little scared. Hmm. Well, we come this far. There's no way to go but forward, Nick. Night of the murder. Okay, uh, I guess I better save. Yes. I believe we're on the right track, I believe. Okay, that night I was on the boat in the lake. Hmm. Something wrong, Mr. Wright? There were so many things wrong, I don't know where to begin. Ah. Um, well, okay, first of all, what time was it? Oh, uh, it was after 11 when I went out on the boat. By that time, everyone had gone home for the night. So I waited until the coast was clear, so to speak. Why were you out on the boat at such an, a late hour? Uh, I was looking for something. I found it. Looking for something? Uh, yeah. Mr. Butts, what was it you were looking for? Oh. What the witness was searching for is irrelevant. Most likely he was hunting for this Gordy. You know, it wouldn't surprise me one bit if that was the truth. This is all irrelevant. Let's get it over with. Well, we kind of went through... We kind of went through this story uh, before the trial. We know what Larry was looking for. So I quietly slipped the boat back at the rental shop dock. Around what time was that? Uh, well, let's see. I figured it... Uh, I was searching for about an hour. I guess it was around 12 o'clock. Yeah. You're not sure? Hey, don't give me that face. I'm not some sort of human sundial, okay? People use watches these days, Larry. Then, just as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. Where did this sound come from? Yeah, well, I wasn't too sure about that. I looked around, you know. Did you look at the lake? Yeah, I looked. I looked over the lake, but I didn't notice the boat. Wasn't there a boat on the lake? Order, order. Well, Mr. Butts. Whoa, whoa. Everybody just calm down, okay? I mean, it was real foggy that night. I'm not sure whether there was a boat out there or not. Oh, okay, no problem. That's just the most important part of this case. Hmm. So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. Hold it. So you only heard one bang, correct? Yeah. Huh. Well, Nick? Hmm. It was a pretty wishy-washy testimony, wasn't it? I guess I should start working on the contradictions. Sorry. I wish I could be more helpful. I wish I could call my sister. Okay, that night I was out on the boat the lake. I was looking for something and I found it. Okay, let's present. What was it? Okay, I'll 
six. Hmm. I think I need to present something. Not the parrot. Okay, um... Okay, quietly ship. I think I heard a bang. Single gunshot. Present. The, the gun, I guess. Let's check, let's see if this, this will do. Your Honor, what do you think about the... Okay, that's uh, nothing. Nope, you don't sound very convinced. Objection overruled. Okay. Objection! Oh, ah, I... Press the wrong button. Hmm, it does. I don't see anything contradictory. Objection overruled. Try to think before I make accusations, Mr. Wright. Whoops. Okay, after I heard the single gunshot, I went home, looked out over the lake, and just noticed the boat. Present. Maybe lake photo. Nope. Okay. I got two more chances. Didn't, but I didn't notice the boat. I think I'm going home. I heard this bang. Present. Cordy article. No, it was a single gunshot. Oh, just after midnight. Two gunshots. Okay. Oh. Alright, let's see. Lot of disposition. Ah, we did something. Wait a sec, Larry. We need to, uh, reload. Because I spent a lot of time... A lot of chances wasted. Continue from save point. Yes. Okay. Looking for something I found it quietly slipped in the back of the boat rental. So I was thinking about going home. I heard a bang, looked over the lake, then noticed the boat. After I heard the single gunshot, went home. Present. A lot of disposition. There we go. Wait a sec, Larry. Uh, what? You only heard one bang. You're sure? That's that's what I said. But Miss Lotta Hart testified yesterday that she heard two bangs. And the old man just now said the same thing. They both heard two gunshots that night. Huh? Were you even listening? Were you paying attention to all what they said? Yo, Nick, please. Huh? You know, something's been bothering me. I'm a witness, see? I'm like a customer here. So you gotta treat me nice and stuff, okay? Uh, Mr. Butts. What? You only heard one gunshot, are you sure? Hmm. Um, well, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure. Huh? Not sure. How could you not be sure? Yeah, well, I uh, might have missed the other gunshot. I was uh, listening to something else. Something else? My radio, dude. On my headphones. What? Order. Order. And stop that booing. <laughs> Mr. Butts. You were listening to the radio on earphones. Yeah, so what? Is that a crime? I listen to my radio. Everybody listens to the radio. Oh, not nowadays. What's the big deal? Hmm. Well, the thing is that everybody listens to podcasts and, you know, um, yeah. 
Mr. Von Karma, your opinion. I couldn't think of the name of the, the mumble rap. If it's a, actually a, like the actual genre to it. Uh, Mr. Von Karma, your opinion. Waste of time. I do not accept his witness, nor his shoddy testimony. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, should he continue the testimony? Uh, maybe we'll go with continue? Your Honor, please allow the witness to continue his testimony. Bah, nothing is more pitiful than a lawyer who doesn't know when he's lost. Very well, Mr. Butts. Please give your testimony and be sure to include details like your radio. Right, leave it to me. I wouldn't if there were any other way out of this, believe me. What Larry heard. Uh, that that look he's doing right now there is also another new look. He, <coughs> he also kind of reminds me of Shaggy in that, that, that profile there. Well, that picture there. It's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. That's why I was listening to an all-request show on the radio, see? I was listening to it real boomin' loud-like, but I'm sure I heard that gunshot. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it, too. You were listening to your radio at a high volume. Yeah, what's the big problem? I can't, can't a man listen to his radio in peace? Isn't this the free country? I truly believe Larry has no idea what the problem here is. Judge, can you believe a word this witness says? What he heard was probably nothing more than a drum beat from the radio. True enough, it is difficult to believe this testimony. Oh. Wait, Your Honor. The witness said he remembers exactly what the DJ said when he heard the gunshot. Excuse me? DJ? An announcer, the guy who says things on the radio. Anyway, well, I can't believe you don't know what a DJ is. What this means is when he heard the sound, no music was playing. The DJ only talks between songs, so he could have heard the gunshot from the lake. I'd like to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. Very well, Mr. Wright. I can't believe I'm continuing this charade. Charade. What Larry heard. Okay, um... Might as well save. We're this... We're this far into the game now. Into the... Okay, title screen. No, back. Okay, it's lonely being alone Christmas Eve. So you turned on the radio. Right. I just wanted to hear someone's voice, you know. You don't know what it's like out there alone on Christmas Eve. Alone. I shouldn't have said anything. That's why I was listening to an all request show on Radio C. Do you, by any chance, remember the name of the program you were listening to? Oh. This has nothing to do with the case, Your Honor. Objection sustained. The witness was listening to the radio. That is all we need to know. Tell us, Mr. Butts, how loud was your radio set to that night? I was listening to it real boomin' loud, like. Real boomin' loud? Yeah, you know. And you had headphones on. Yep. I wouldn't think you could hear anything going on outside, outside at all. But I'm sure I heard that gunshot. Can you prove that? No, 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 of course you can't. Nah, I can't prove it. But I remember that moment real clear. I mean, while I was talking about it, it came back to me real clear. Clear to me, you know. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it, too. Alright. What did he say? Oh. Mr. Wright. Please cease these pointless questions. What possible good could knowing what a DJ... Radio DJ said, do us. Indeed, Mr. Von Karma has a point. I'll allow the question only if you see some reason why I should, we should care. We should care. We should care, Your Honor. Of course we should. Why? Uh, well, how do you know we, if we don't ask, hmm? Fine, very well. 
Mr. Butch, please testify to the court. What was the radio announcer saying when you heard the gunshot? Just when he said, hey, it's almost Christmas, I heard the gunshot. Hmm. Are you sure? Of course I am. She had this real sexy voice. Hmm, maybe Von Karma was right. I'm not sure how that helped us at all. This is the most ludicrous testimony I've ever heard. But there is one gleaming ray of hope in there. I got depressed until I get to the bottom of what happened. It's lonely being alone. I'll request I'll listen to it real booming loud like, and I'm sure I heard that gunshot. I remember DJ saying it's two, just when she said, Hey, it's almost Christmas, I heard the gunshot. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, um... Twelve fifteen. Okay, I remember exactly what DJ was. I heard two. Shot that gunshot. Just listen to it real boom and loud like that's why I was listening to it. Where you see it's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. Okay, um. Okay, present. Twelve fifteen a.m. Nope. Hmm. What is the... What is the thing here? Hmm. Oh, okay. Uh... Robert's autopsy. Shot from a meter away. And, uh... Hmm. Shows an empty lake taken automatically at 1224. Okay. Uh, no, that's not it. Hmm. What do I do here? I don't know. Okay. Present. 24th, 25th, 12.15 a.m. There was an empty map. Through Glenshard, just after midnight. These two are gonna have uh, in the case metal detector. Okay. Um, present. Oh, look at that. Larry, are you actually okay? Hold on. Title screen. Yes. From say point. Okay, I'm listening to all our questions on radio. Listen to it real booming loud like. Heard the gunshot. Know exactly what the DJ was saying to it too. Press. Okay, I gotta press this and um choose the uh we should care put your hands down <sighs> she said hey it's almost christmas i heard the gunshot present 
leak photo. Objection! Larry, are you absolutely sure y what you're saying is correct? Huh? What's with that face? You look scary, dude. Hey, if you're trying to scare me, you better know I don't scare that easily. Is something the matter, Mr. Wright? Your Honor, did you hear what the witness just said? The DJ said, hey, it's almost Christmas when he heard the gunshot. Indeed, and? Almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. Do you realize what this means? When he heard the gunshot, it was still Christmas Eve. That would seem to be the case, yes. But he should have heard that gunshot after midnight. This photograph is irrefutable, proof of this fact. Let's see what the time was on the photo, no, let's see what the time was, no. Let's see what the time was on the photo taken when the gun triggered Miss Hart's camera. Hmm. 12, 25, oh, 15, 15 minutes after midnight on Christmas day. This is a clear contradiction, your honor. Order, order. What does this mean? The two prior witnesses heard gunshots after midnight. However, this witness says he heard a gunshot before midnight. Judge, the answer is simple. The current witness is plainly mistaken. Just look at him, suspicious. What? Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you think about Mr. Butts claiming he heard the gunshot before midnight? Larry's right. Larry's not mistaken, Your Honor. I think uh, that extra photograph we have is a key to the next part. The empty lake one. Larry's not mistaken, Your Honor. He heard that gunshot before midnight. Hmm. Intriguing. I'm assuming you have evidence for this wild claim. Show me evidence that there was a gunshot before midnight. The second lake photo at 11.50. Look at this photograph. Look at this photo. Okay, this is a stupid song. This was taken by our witness yesterday, Miss Lotta Hart, with her automatic camera. The timestamp on the photo reads December 24, 10.50 p.m. See, I'm tapping the paper, showing that I'm right. Oh, yeah? Hmm. But there's nothing on the lake in this picture. Your Honor, the real issue here is not why nothing is shown in this photograph. It is why this photograph exists at all. What do you mean? Your Honor, this photograph was taken by an automatic camera. That camera was set to go off in response to, a loud, to loud noises. Aha. Uh -huh. Correct. There was a loud noise on the lake at 11.50 p.m. That is why this photograph was taken. In other words, when Larry heard that gunshot, it was most definitely Christmas Eve. Indeed, it would seem that this is the case. Then where does that leave us? Okay, uh, Ms. Hart testified that she heard gunshots after midnight. Are you claiming she was mistaken? Not at all, your honor. It is a fact that the camera also triggered at 15 minutes after midnight. Your honor, that night there were two sets of gunshots with a 25 minute pause between them. Hmm, intriguing. That's pretty interesting. Why would this be? Don't be fooled, Judge. That camera was set to respond to loud noises. Yes? Naughty, naughty. There is no proof that the loud noise at 11.50 was a gunshot. Why, the victim could have sneezed, trigger triggering the camera. Hey, my nose was clear that night, man. Clear. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, there's no turning back now. C 
can you prove that the loud noise at 11.50 p.m. was indeed a gunshot? Please show the court evidence if you have any. Uh, this gun was fired three times. Okay, before I make a mistake... Well, actually, I've got to present it. This is my evidence. The murder weapon. Something about this pistol was bothering me, Your Honor. Both of the witnesses who testified yesterday heard two gunshots. However, the murder weapon was fired three times. When then was the last shot fired? Only now I, I only now have I realized the truth. That the third shot was shot Larry heard just no the that <sighs> That third shot was the shot Larry heard just before midnight. Hmm. Order, order. Hmm. That would make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. However, this leaves me wondering exactly what did happen that night on the lake. Exactly. If this is true, then there were two sets of gunshots separated by 25 minutes. One at 11.50, another at 15 minutes after midnight. Why, I ask you, why? Uh oh, I better think of something quick. Hmm, wait a second. Gunshots separated by 25 minutes. Ah, oh, what's wrong, Nick? I have it, I have it. Huh? Remember this case with the steel samurai? Huh? Yeah, of course, I remember. The murderer in this case had the same idea as the murderer in that case. What? What do you mean? Maya. Yes? If we don't figure this out now, we'll never overturn Edgeworth's guilty verdict. I got a hunch and I'm going to run with it. Right. I mean, is this safe? Safe? We've already gotten a guilty verdict. We have nothing to lose. Hmm. You just watch and let me know if I say anything that sounds fishy, okay? Right, Nick. Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wright. The testimony now just has cleared up this entire case. Okay, how is that? What do you mean, Mr. Wright? So you finally realize the truth. There can be no other murderer here than Miles Edgeworth himself. Nope. Wrong, Von Karma. A man was shot that night, but it wasn't Edgeworth who did the shooting. Listen, rookie. Take a deep breath and consider the facts. At the time of the murder, one boat was on that lake. This was shown by the witness's photograph. The defendant, Edgeworth, and the victim, Robert Hammond, were on that boat. There was a gunshot fired on that boat, and Robert Hammond fell into the lake. The distance of the shooting was one meter. It couldn't have been suicide. Well, the guilty party has to be the other man on the boat. I admit, it is hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes, but this assumes that the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? We have photographic evidence of the time of the shooting. The timestamp on the photo says 0015, but Larry heard a gunshot 25 minutes before that. Robert Hammond was then killed was killed then, 25 minutes before the shot on the lake. That's the only way that Edgeworth could be innocent. So somebody staged a shooting after a murder? Okay. I, I think I follow. Hmm. Hmm. Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Explain who this is sitting on the boat. The murder in Hammond. Edgeworth and the murder. Oh, okay. uh, uh, save. So glad I can save on that screen. Okay. Uh, 
the murderer in Hammond. Edgeworth in the murderer. Edgeworth in Hammond. Hmm. Okay, so Edgeworth and ha it can't be Edgeworth and Hammond. Edgeworth and the murderer. Because I think Hammond was killed before then. Of course it was Edgeworth and the murderer. After the mur- Okay, I think this- I think I'm on the right track because of the music. After the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 1150, he assumed the guise of Mr. Hammond and met Edgeworth. What? Are you serious? Yes. Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't suspect anything when the murderer took, when the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. Hmm. I'm not sure what to make of all this. Ludicrous. I, oh, I think that wasn't ludicrous. Uh, Mr. Wright, tell us the name of the murderer then. The murderer's name? Right. It's Miles Edgeworth. A lot of heart. I don't know. Can't be a lot of heart. Hmm. I'm gonna go with, I don't know, maybe something will come up. Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. You don't know? Bah! Again, you waste my time. I don't know because he never told us. Huh? The murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop. That old man. At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. The caretaker of the boat shop? Where did he do this? There weren't any boats on the lake then. Why would he have to go all the way on the lake just to shoot someone? May I suggest that the real scene of the crime was not in a boat? What? Well then, where did the murder take place? Okay, where the murder took place. Okay. Right at the docks. Here, of course, the boat shop where he lives. That way he could meet with the victim without seeing. Oh. Do you have proof that the boat shop was the scene of the crime? Recall Larry's testimony, if you will. That night, he was out on the lake, in the boat, searching for something. He finds it and returns to the boat. Just then he's starting to head to home, he hears a gunshot. He hear... he heard a gunshot, your honor. Even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would that be if he had just returned the boat? The boat shop. Hmm. Mr. Wright, what happened that night on Gord Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. Y yes, Your Honor. Nick, are you sure about this? Um, not really. But I think if I start at the very beginning, and I take it slow, I might just be able to figure this out. Oh. Okay, let's... Uh... Okay, we're, I think uh, we're at a crossroads here. Um, save. Yes. That night, the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to his shop. Oh. This was around 11.50. That was when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. 
After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat. He became Robert Hammond. Then he got in a boat with Edgeworth and went out in the middle of the lake. Then who fired the pistol on the boat, Mr. Wright? Ah, uh, let's see. Save. Yes. I think he did shoot, but he missed. On purpose. The boat shop caretaker. Of course it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice. Both missed Edgeworth. On purpose. Wait a minute. Yes? Why would he shoot twice if he didn't mean to hit anyone? Uh, details, details. Know this, Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of explanations is the moment you lose. Tell us why the murderer had to fire twice. To create a witness. This seems like the most likely one. I believe he shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness. The murderer lifts his pistol and fires one shot. That ensures that anyone who heard the shot would look at the lake. It, uh, let's see. Indeed, Miss Hart did exactly that after hearing the first shot. Next, the murderer waits a bit and he fires again. Then, the murderer jumps from the boat himself leaving the pistol in the boat behind him. Hmm, I see. To someone looking from the edge of the lake, it would appear that one of the men on the boat had shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. That's why he shot twice to draw attention to the boat. Hmm, once you realize that, everything else falls into place. The boat shop caretaker swam back to his shop. He then put on Robert Hammond's wet coat back on the body and threw the body into the lake. This is what happened, Your Honor. These are the events that transpired that night on Gord Lake. Hmm. 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 Bailiff. Bring out the witness from before. The boat shop caretaker, quickly. Okay. All right. Very well. While we are waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, a few questions. Mr. Edgeworth, please take the stand. Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth, you heard what the defense has said. Yes. Well, why did you go to the lake that night? Hmm. What Mr. Wright has said was mostly correct. Astonishingly, uh, astonishingly so, actually. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. The letter was signed, Robert Hammond. He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he had something very important to discuss with me. Something important. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't say what it was. Hmm. Your Honor, sir. Bailiff, we are conducting a trial here. I ask you to remain quiet. The witness has disappeared. He is not the boat he isn't at the boat shop either. What? What should I do? Find him quickly. We cannot allow him to get away. Okay, uh, what's going on? Cor court is on pause for now. Mr. Von Karma, your witness has disappeared. Hmm. A search warrant has already been issued. Hmm. It goes without saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize all its forces to find that witness. Am I understood? Hmm. One more thing. 
Just who was at the boat shop? No, just who is that boat shop caretaker? I think his identity has become very important at this trial. It's Yanni Yogi. I want him, and I want to know who he is. Hmm. Very well. Court is adjourned. Okay, I knew there was going to be a third trial day. Yay, Nick, you did it. Yeah. Well, at least I got out of... I got out from under that guilty verdict. And what about Larry? That was something else. Even Von Karma didn't know what to do with his testimony. Larry really helped us out. Sure, once I sifted through his unique testimony... Still, he did save us. I just wish our cases weren't so down to the wire all the time. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's, it's, it's us on the trial instead of our clients. Yes, it is. Hey, Edgeworth. Hmm. Um, Mr. Edgeworth. Hmm. Huh. Did you say something? Don't look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're probably going to get off the hook. You could try to smile a little bit. Relax. Ugh. I'm sorry. But I fear it's not over for me yet. What? What do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now. And I don't know whether or not to tell you. Edgeworth? No. There's so little time left. I want to tell you get it off my chest, but hmm, I can't make up my mind. What is what is this about Edgeworth? Hmm, it's a nightmare I had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. Hmm. To be continued. Well, Yes, definitely. So I think, yeah, I think we definitely have another episode or two ahead of us. Because the way that um, each episode is taking like at least an episode or two is, yeah, so anyway. So I'm thinking that this is going to be a 10 episode series possibly. What was Mr. Edgeworth talking about? Hmm. A memory of a crime. That I committed. A memory of murder. Do you really think Mr. Edgeworth killed? Hmm. I don't believe it, not Edgeworth. Some painful memory has been troubling him recently. But he'd never take someone's life. Never. Nick. Yo, how's everyone doing? What do you think of my performance today? I had him swooning in the aisles, huh, Maya? Swooning? Me? Oh, oh yes, I do remember feeling faint. Right on, tell me the truth. It was like love at first sight, right? Right, Nick? Uh, me? Uh, well, maybe my heart skipped a beat or two. Hmm. I think you could do better than that. Come on, I saved Edgeworth in there, dude. Edgy. You guys should be bowing before me. Yeah, bow before your hero. Okay, let's talk to him. Today's trial. Larry. <sighs> you really helped us. You really helped out in the trial today. You did. If you weren't there, Larry, I'm sure Mr. Edgeworth would have been found guilty. Ha! Ha ha ha! But seriously, Nick, that boat shop caretaker guy is pretty suspicious. But Edgy ain't off the hook yet. Way to spoil the mood, Larry. Hey, I'm just the guy sitting in the audience, you know. But from where I was sitting, Edgy seemed pretty edgy. I mean, you can really tell it. No. I mean, you can really know he's telling the truth about that night. Hmm. Nick? I don't 
I don't know. <sighs> but what do I do? But I, but what I do know is, I'm going to believe in you two until the end. Us two. Edgeworth and who else? You mean me, right? Nah, he means me, right, Nick? Yeah, you, Larry. Not me? Hmm. But why you, Larry? Huh? Uh, actually, yeah. Why me, Nick? Hmm. Enough with the silent treatment. Okay. Nick, why do you trust Mr. Edgeworth so much? I mean, he's changed recently, true. But when we first met him, he was kind of a jerk, don't you think? Hmm. Huh. You didn't know him back then. Back when he wanted to become a defense attorney. Wait. Was that when you two were classmates? Yes, I'm in, in grade school. They saved me. Miles. And Larry. They saved me, and I'll never forget it. That's why I became a defense attorney, you know. What? Hey, hey, Larry, what's he talking about? Huh? Uh, um... Uh, sorry, I kind of forgot. Hmm. Okay, Nick, out with it. I'm going to hear the story today, and that's final. Okay, okay. It's kind of a long story. I'm so angry there. Oh, it's kind of a long story, so hang in there. Hmm. It was the beginning of spring, fourth grade. I was on trial, a class trial. A class trial? A class trial. You remember, Larry? Spring, fourth grade? A kid in my class got his lunch money stolen. Lunch money? Our school was really small. Every month, kids would bring in an envelope with money for lunch from home. Ah, oh, I see. Anyway, this kid's envelope disappeared with $38 still inside. Oh, yeah. Now that you mention it, I do remember that. I can see why you forget, though. You were out of school that day. Anyway, the envelope had been stolen during, uh, P.E. class. I was coming down with a cold and I skipped P.E. that day. I was the only one not in class. So they thought you did it. Yep. The kids in class said I should be put on trial. Trial? So the next day we held a classroom trial with me as the defendant. I, I didn't do it. Guilty. He did it. Guilty. It was you. Thief. Give me my money back. You're such a meanie. No one play him. Just admit he did it. You can't tell the truth. Tell us the truth. You're not going to play with me anymore. Yeah. No more on my eraser. You shouldn't be allowed in relay race or on the library committee. Give me my 50 cents alone on you. What is that? What is that? Rob the bank the other day. Or whatever. Okay. Now, Phoenix, you know you shouldn't steal people's money. It's not right. In the end, even the teacher thought I'd done it. Apologize to the class, Phoenix. <sighs> okay, I gotta shake off this sleepiness. I'm... <sighs> it's just, just, uh... Yeah, I fell asleep, uh, an hour. I think I fell asleep for an hour and I got up and I was like thinking, I, I, I want to record this episode because I want to... Because I don't want to leave... I don't want to leave a lingering episode until the end after October after, yeah anyway <laughs> I didn't know what was happening no I didn't know what was happening I was so sad I couldn't stop crying everyone was staring at me like I'd done it I tried to apologize I went over to where the boy was sitting that's when it happened you shouldn't have to apologize the only thing that belongs in the trial is evidence. Anything else has no place. You should all be ashamed, amateurs. Miles. Oh, look at that, it's Miles. He's all preppy, too. It wasn't you who stole my money, was it? Uh, no. Then you shouldn't apologize. 
Everyone's been shouting that you did it, but no one has any proof. That is why, Your Honor, this boy is innocent. But Miles, it was your money that was stolen. Yeah, yeah, he did it. He's the one. We don't need proof. Make him say he's sorry. Why don't you all just shut up? Oh, yeah, look. This is always... No, this is always how it is. Everyone ganging up and picking on one person. Just think how he feels. He said he didn't do it, so he didn't do it. Very well. I will replace the money myself. This class trial is over. That's how it happened. After that, the three of us were always friends. Wow, I had no idea. Yeah, I had no idea either. I mean, I forgot. That's when I learned what it meant to be alone. Totally alone without a friend in the world. You did a good thing, Larry. Um, yeah, well, I was just lucky that I took the day off from school. If I'd been there, they would have thought I'd done it. So I took, I kind of took it personally, see? When something smells, it's usually the butts. Edgeworth skulls. Anyway, Edgeworth and I talked after that class trial. That's when I heard his father was a defense attorney. I remember his eyes would shine when he talked about his father. I'm going to become a defense attorney, just like my dad. A famous defense attorney. Then a few months later, he suddenly transferred to another school. The DL6 incident. Right. I'm not sure, but the transfer probably had to do with his father's death. That's so sad. Hmm. It was several years later when I heard Edgeworth's name again. There was an article about him in a newspaper. The headline was something like, Dark Suspicions of a Demon Attorney. Fabricating evidence, manipulating testimonies, covering up facts. The article said he'd do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. But why? What happened? I mean, that's not the edgy I used to know at all. That's what I thought, too. I tried to get in touch with him, and I don't know how many times. He never replied. I guess he didn't want to see his old friends. I couldn't just drop it, though. I wanted to meet him, to learn why he had become who he became. That's when I decided. Wait, you don't mean... That's why? That's why you became a defense attorney? To meet Edgeworth? If I was a defense attorney, I knew he'd had to meet me whether he wanted to or not. In court. Okay, that is one of the smallest reasons to choose a career, I think. A very minor reason. Oh, it's uh, very stuffy in here. Oh. I will notice the difference in a little bit. Edgeworth believed in me, and I believe in him. He's in pain, and no one's on his side. I'm the only person who... I'm the, I'm the only one who knows the real Edgeworth. I'm the only one who can help him. Whoa, Nick. So is that why you helped me out for free? Uh, yes. I helped you because I believed in you. Except I don't remember saying I'd do it for free. Aw, oh, Nick. 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 We have to save Mr. Edgeworth if it's the last thing we do, okay? Right. It very well may be. First, there's that rental boat shop caretaker. We need to find out who or what he is. I'd settle for who. Yanni Yogi. I guess I can clean out some of the this evidence I no longer need. Hmm. Okay, let's go. Right, let's uh, present some stuff to him. Let's see what is. Okay, Robert's autopsy. Woohoo, I was hot out there. Hot. I'm glad someone's happy about how this case is going. 
He seems too happy to care about anything I show him. Okay. say about anything. Okay, let's get out of here. Where, where should we go? Grossberg's law office is there. Let's check it out. December 27. He's out again. When does he work anyway? Now, now, don't be harsh. Guess we'll have to come back later. Okay, move. Law offices, move. I guess we should go check out the detention center first. Still sulking? Ugh. You look as grim as always. Hmm. Um, Mr. Edgeworth, I heard this story about the class trial. Class trial? What do you mean? You don't remember? No, I don't. Your lunch money was stolen, wasn't it, in fourth grade? Lunch money? Oh, oh right, yes. I seem to remember something like that. Nick, I think you're the only one who really remembers. Well, it probably only really mattered to me anyway. Mr. Edgeworth, didn't you, didn't you know that trial was the reason Nick became an, a defense attorney? Hmm. Ridiculous. Gee, thanks. That said, it does sound like the kind of thing you do. You haven't changed a bit, have you, right? So, simple. To a fault, even. Well, maybe, yeah, but I think you changed too much, Edgeworth. Hmm? Perhaps. Okay. I'll present all the stuff. Sorry. I'm not sure I can help you with that. Oops. What are you showing me this picture for? Uh... Uh, no reason. You know I was impressed by your deduction in the trial today. Granted, you were at the end of your rope, but still. Nick, he noticed. Haha. <laughs> Misty Fay. Red map. Pistol bullet. It was that case that changed my life. And tomorrow, on December 28th, its statute of limitations run out. Tomorrow, could that be a coincidence? But even if the case is finally closed on paper, it will never be erased from my memory, never. Poor Mr. Edgeworth. Nick, no! That's a photo of his father. Don't show him that. You're right. Now probably, now probably isn't a good time to dredge up those memories. What is it? Uh, nothing. Huh? Okay, let's talk. Why prosecute? Hey, Edgeworth. Why did you become a prosecutor anyway? You used to look up to your dad. You said you wanted to be a defense attorney, right? I couldn't let myself de deny reality like, like you. Wh what do you mean? My father was taken from me, and you want me to defend criminals? I'm sorry, right? I'm not that good of a person. 
One suspect was apprehended in your father's murder, right? Yes, the man trapped in the elevator with my father. His name was Yani Yogi. He had to be the shooter any way you look at it. Yet he was found innocent. That defense attorney got him off the hook. That would be Robert Hammond. Why would... Why would Yanni Yogi kill Robert Hammond? On that day 15 years ago... No, on that day 15 years ago... The three of us are trapped in the elevator for five hours. When we were rescued, we all suffered oxygen deprivation. I had lost all memory of the murder. Lost your memory? Even now, I can't recall what happened in that elevator. That was the crux of Yogi's, no, Yogi's attorney's argument in, in court. He claimed Yani Yogi had not been of sound mind due to the oxygen deprivation. Yogi was released due to a lack of evidence. Innocent. That's when I changed my mind. I started to hate defense attorneys. Hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Prosecu Prosecutor Von Karma. What's your relationship with Von Karma? He's my teacher, and a man who deserves respect. I learned everything I know of courtroom techniques from him. So, he's like my sister was to you, Nick. you call me a eunuch? He is a perfectionist in all things. In court, in his personal life, he is obsessed with doing everything perfectly. Perfectly, huh? In all the cases he has taken on, none were left unsolved. And not one suspect was declared innocent, ever. But, but that's, I know. It's possible some of the suspects were indeed innocent. However, it is impossible for us to accurately determine that in every case. All Von, Van Car Von Karma does in his job is to find the suspect guilty perfectly. In any case, it's nigh well impossible to find a weakness in him. Should a weakness appear, he would do everything in his power to make it go away. Um, Edgeworth? If what you're saying is true, you're headed for a guilty sentence tomorrow. He's right. Now's no time to praise the enemy, Mr. Edgeworth. Hmm. It's a strange situation in which I find myself, I'll admit. No kidding. Okay, uh, let's move to, let's see, should go check, should go ask, what's his name, Gumshoe about the, uh, the murder on the run. Hmm, looks like Detective Gumshoe hasn't gotten back yet. Gumshoe? He won't be coming back today. Oh, really? He said he was, there was some guy he had to arrest by tomorrow. The boat shop caretaker. A something about catching him if it's the last thing I do, pal. Good luck, Gumshoe. Okay, let's move to Gord Lake. Hey, pal. Long time no see. Oh, Detective Gumshoe. Close, no close one today, huh? I got so worked up I snapped my tie, my tie in half. Uh, sorry about that. No prop, pal. Thanks to you, we now know who really did it. You mean the boat shop caretaker? Look, I'll make you a promise. I'll have that scoundrel in my custody by tomorrow, by trial time tomorrow. Come what may, it's my duty to you as a police officer. 
Now I'm off to catch me a criminal. Hmm. Detective Gumshrew sure is active today. Oh, one other, one other thing. Ah! No one can go into the woods today. The woods? Where Lotta was camping? Hmm. The woods are off limits to camping, and apparently the park ranger found out. He got pretty mad, so no one can go in for a while. I guess Lotta's in a lot of trouble. Anyway, I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Alright, let's move. Public beach? Okay. Huh. The steel eyesore is missing. Eyesore? Looks like the hot dog stand is closed too. I guess Larry's been too busy with the trial to show up for work. Move. Yeah, we can only go to the boat rental shop. Oh, Yogi. Yogi Bear. That old caretaker got away. Yep. I never imagined he might be the real murderer. Hmm. Ahem. I know that th clearing of the throat anywhere. Oh. Aha. Hello. What might you be doing here? Out for a walk, hmm? Ah, the days of my youth. Like the scent of fresh lemon. You, uh, no, like the scent of fresh lemon, you see. Mr. Grossberg, this is no time for idle reminiscing. Mr. Edgeworth's trial ends tomorrow. Uh, that is true, yes. But from what I saw in today's trial, Edgeworth should be fine, right? Uh-oh. The batteries on my Wiimote died. Hold on. I wonder if switching them around will, uh, will do anything. Yeah, they've been on, these batteries have been on low for the past two episodes. And just been delaying the inevitable. Yep, these are totally dead. Okay, um, hold on. Alright, and we're back. Um, yeah, I just had to locate a couple of double A's. Well, I'm not so sure about that. Ho ho! Then what do you mean by that? Well, I'm not sure. Hmm. Well, if you find anything out, come by my office at once. I may be able to offer you some assistance. Thanks. Bye. What do you think Mr. Grossberg was doing here anyway? Who knows? I examine. The boats? There are some boats floating at the dock. The murder took place in a boat from this dock. Apparently, the police took away the actual boat that was used that night. Indeed, there's space for one more boat at the dock. Hmm. Okay, doesn't look like anyone is around. The caretaker must have run for the hills, huh? Yeah, looks like it. He didn't seem like a bad person. There's forest here beyond these bushes. Nick, the forest. There's someone in there. Oh, you're right. There's a few policemen in there. They must be looking for the caretaker. Good luck. Okay, let us move inside the boathouse. Hopefully, yeah. The bird is still there. Hmm. Nobody's home. Hello, hello, Squawk. Hey, it's Polly. I wonder where your owner's gone, Polly. Hello, hello, Squawk. I can't believe he'd run off and leave his poor parrot to fend for herself. Hello, hello, Squawk. Okay, big shaman. Hmm, everything's cold. Looks like he didn't turn his heater on. I guess he hasn't been back since the trial. 
Say, Nick, don't people usually put pictures of fish up on the wall to boast about them? Uh, yeah, I guess so. You mean pictures of fish they caught, right? Right, but don't all the fish on the wall here look really puny to you? Well, you know what they say. You should have seen the one that got away. Except the one that got away from us was the caretaker, and we did see him. Why do I feel like we're having two different conversations here? Ah! What's wrong? Um, oh, um, never mind. What? Tell me. Just when I saw the TV, I remembered. They're showing a Pink Princess special this week. Hmm. Oh. See? That's why I didn't want to tell you. It doesn't look like he used his kitchen much. You're right. I guess the whole pasta restaurant thing was a lie. What? You thought he was telling the truth? Uh. Maybe I should take care of Polly, Nick? You probably shouldn't kidnap her. The police know about her anyway. I'm sure that they'll do something. Well, okay. Sorry, Polly. He says I can't take you. Great, now the bird's going to hate me. Okay, um... Hmm. Okay. Hmm. I guess we'll just leave then. Oh wait, fishing rod. That fishing pole looks expensive. Uh, maybe we should bring it to Detective Gumshoe. Don't you think the caretaker would mind? Well, we could just leave him a metal detector in exchange. Uh, maybe we better not. Okay, let's get out of here. Move. Where do we go from here? Back to criminal affairs? Nope. Maybe detention center? Move. Wait, hold on. Maybe he has something new to say. Crowsburg. Hmm. Maybe he has something different to say. Alright, move. Hmm. Trash can with no trash. At least the place is well maintained. Guess Larry has today off. He was pretty happy about saving Mr. Edgeworth. True, we owe him big. We owe him big. This lake sure likes to cause problems, doesn't it? Huh? I mean, everything that happened here turned out to be a lie. Gordy was a lie, then the charges against Mr. Edgeworth were all lies. I guess you're right. I mean, I'm glad the charges were all lies, but still. Okay. No one's going to sit here on a cold day like today. Well, unless they were eating samurai, a samurai dog. How would that change the temperature, I wonder? Hmm. You seem troubled, Nick. N no, who, me? Okay, move. So what do we do here? I 
examine. Maybe you'll find something. That reminds me, Nick. Polly here knows the number to the safe, right? Oh, look, now we're something. Now we're getting somewhere. Yeah, that's right. Polly, what's the number to the safe? 1228. Squawk. Let's open it, Nick. Come on. I'm sure there isn't any money in there. Aw. Oh, but hey. He keeps it locked, right? There must be something val of value in there. I'm not so sure. Okay, Nick. Let's see what's in there. I guess there might be a clue or two. Hmm. The only thing in here is a letter. A letter? Ah. No. Ah. Boring. Hmm. There's no name or signature on this thing. It's handwritten in very precise, clear letters. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Edgeworth. Nick, why would Mr. Edgeworth's name be on here? How should I know? I'm going to read the whole thing. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. It also says this is your last chance. Now is your time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. Hmm. The rest of the letter goes on to describe the murder plot in detail. How to kill Robert Hammond and frame Edgeworth. Calling Edgeworth out to the lake, getting on the boat, firing twice. This is exactly what I figured out today in court. It's all here, in perfect detail. Hmm. What do you think it means, Nick? I don't know, but it looks like these are instructions for that caretaker. When he killed Robert Hammond, he called out Edgeworth. He was following instructions. But who could have written that letter? And what does it mean to get revenge on Miles Edgeworth? Look, I, I don't know, okay? But one thing's for certain. This letter is an amazing clue. Added letter from the safe to the court record. Let's talk to Polly again. go to Grossberg's office. He said, come and see me if you find something. Okay, uh, Gord Lake entrance. Move, come on. Hmm. Okay, let's go to Wright and Company office. Oh, one day left, Nick. Yeah, I know. Well, no time to waste. Let's get going. Talk. What to do? What do you think we should do now, Maya? You you would know best, Nick. Just do what you do. That should work. Okay. Well, have any good ideas? Well, this is all tied to the DL6 incident. incident. We better find out as much as we can about that murder before tomorrow. Something that happened back then has a hold on Edgeworth and won't let go. Present. Stop showing me stuff and let's get cracking. We only have today to get to the bottom of this. Okay. She's gonna keep getting mad at me. Nothing new to say. Okay. I, I get it now. Let's move. There it is. Hmm. Okay, maybe we go... Maybe we should go talk to... Edgeworth. Hmm. 
Edgeworth see this letter? Huh. This came out of the sa the safe in the shack where that boat rental caretaker lives. I see. Hmm. Revenge. On me? Who is that old guy anyway? I... I don't know. Could he be an innocent defendant you got declared guilty or something? Nice, right? But I don't, I don't remember that old man. Not at all. So he was following this letter then. Which means there was someone else behind it. Now is your time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. Two men? Meaning myself and Robert Hammond? It also says this is your last chance. Last chance? Wait, maybe. Maybe he's talking about the statute of limitations on the DL6 incident. No, I think it's Yanni Yogi who, need, who, wants to, who needs to get revenge on Miles and his dad. Wait. Wait. That old man. What is it? Do you know who, who he is? Yogi. Could he be Yogi? Yep. Yogi? The suspect in the DL6 incident. The one who was found innocent. Okay, I think we talk to him now. Yanni Yogi. Yanni Yogi was a court bailiff at the time. We just happened to be in that elevator together 15 years ago. Oh, earthquake. The quake was incredibly strong. Before I knew it, everything was dark. We were there for so long it felt like forever. The air thinned, and the darkness closed in on us in that little box. We became unsettled. Help, I can't breathe. Quiet, I said quiet, you're not making this any easier. I want to get out, help, get us out. Don't shout, you'll use up more oxygen. That's all I remember. When I came to, I was in a hospital bed, staring up at the ceiling. In court, Yanni's, Yanni Yogi's mental condition was called into question. They claimed the oxygen deprivation and stress had caused temporary insanity. In the end, the claim passed the court and Yogi was found innocent. Huh. But isn't that strange? This letter tells him to get revenge on Edgeworth. Why would he want to take revenge on you? Hmm. R right. Yeah. There's something that's been troubling me these last days, last few days. I didn't know whether or not I should tell you. You mean the nightmare? It's a nightmare I've had, a memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of murder. I think, I think the time has come to tell all. The nightmare. For the last 15 years, I've had the same dream almost every night. I wake up in a fearful sweat every time. What kind of dream? It's a dream about my father's killing in the dark. Help! I can't breathe. Quiet. I said quiet. You're not making this any easier. I want to get out. Help! Get us out. Don't shout. You'll use up more oxygen. I... I can't breathe. Mm. You're... You, you're you used up my air. What? Stop breathing my air. I'll... 
I'll stop you. Ah, what? What are you? Stop breathing my air. No, father. He's attacking father. Then I see the pistol laying at my feet. I don't know if it was evidence from that day in court or the bailiffs. In a daze, I picked up the pistol. Get away! Oh, get away from my father! Oh, bang. Oh. And with that scream, I wake. It's a bone-chilling scream. A scream that has rung in my ears for the past 15 years. Hmm, but... That's just a dream, right? Right? Hmm. That thought is the only thing that has kept me sane for the last 15 years. But what if I'm wrong? What if it's real? They say that sometimes people shut out memories in self-defense. Maybe it was I who killed my father. What? If you think about it that way... This letter makes sense. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Think about it. Yogi was really innocent. That's why he wanted revenge against me. Wait, Edgeworth, you mean you? It was me. I was the true criminal of DL6. I shot my father. This is bad. What are we going to do, Nick? What can we do? I don't know. I don't think there is anything we can do, like it or not. If there's someone else who knows a lot about DL6 incident, maybe... Hmm? There is, Nick. There is someone who knows about DL6. It's the bird. I'm gonna guess the bird. It's gotta be the bird. Move. Let's go to Roseburg just in case. Okay. Okay, maybe it is Grossberg. I thought of the bird for some reason. M Mr. Grossberg. Ah, hello there. What's wrong? You look troubled. No kidding, I can't believe you're not. M my, my, my. Just calm down and tell me what's happened, hmm? It's m Mr. Edgeworth. He, he... Blabbity, blabbity, blah. I see. So Edgeworth dreamt he shot his own father. It, it's only a dream. Only a dream. Hmm. I wonder. What? If that's the case, then why don't you two look so troubled, hmm? Well... Also, consider this. Yogi quite certainly holds deep a deep grudge against Miles Edgeworth. So deep, he'd want to frame him for murder. This leads me to sur surmise that Mr. Edgeworth's dream was not a dream. It was real. As you imagined, Miles Edgeworth threw the pistol to save his father. The pistol fired, and the deed was done. N n no. I, I don't believe it. Yogi was suspect of suspected of murder, and his career as a bailiff was irre irre irrevocably wrecked. Thus, he sought revenge on Miles Edgeworth. This was his last chance, of course, with the statute of limitations so close. Let's present some stuff. Uh, quite sorry. I have nothing to say concerning that. Ugh. In any case, it's a good... It's, it's good that the one shooting isn't Miles. You bet it's good. I can't believe the fiendish planning that went into this murder. And we almost fell right into his trap. What a creep. Ah, she was a beautiful woman. I'm truly sorry about what I did. Huh? Sorry about what? Hmm. I think I'll stay out of this one. 
Uh, quite sorry. I have nothing to say concerning that. Hmm. This incident took place 15 years ago tomorrow. So tomorrow we'll see the completion of not one, but two trials. All thanks to the Statute of Limitations. However, I'm afraid the damage that the DL6 incident has done will never be erased. Gregory Edgeworth. He was a gifted man. His death was truly a loss. I wonder what would have become of Von Karma were he alive. Oh ho! So this is the letter. It does seem that Yogi was following this letter when he killed Hammond. You know, um, I think it was Von Karma who who orchestrated the whole thing. Hmm. He had a thing against. Uh, no. I guess I'm thinking too ahead. I got myself confused there when he killed Hammond. But why kill Robert Hammond? Hammond was a skilled defense attorney, but he defended clients not for their sake, but for his own. Huh? His own sake? He never trusted his clients, that one. The only thing he trusted was his own ability. But he got his client found innocent, so why should it matter? Actually, my dear, it's quite different. He won that innocent verdict for no one but himself. Yogi was a free man, but socially he was ruined. Huh. You'll understand soon enough. Hmm. Wait. What is it? This letter. I've seen this handwriting somewhere before. A long time ago. Whose handwriting was this? No, whose handwriting was this? Do you have any idea who wrote this? Can't be Miles. Can't be Yanni. Gonna be Manfred von Karma. Hmm, could it be Manfred von Karma? Von Karma? Why would he have something to do with this? Um, well, I'm not sure. Hmm. Hmm, von Karma, von Karma. Wait, you're right, my boy. This is Von Karma's handwriting, I am sure of it. I used to see it all the time in, on court reports. What? But, but that means the one who told Mr. Yogi to kill was... Correct. Manfred Von Karma himself. What does this mean then? Why would Von Karma want to frame Edgeworth? Hmm. Gregory Edgeworth. What do you know about Edgeworth's father? Hmm. He was a defense attorney without a peer. Without peer. It sounded trite, but it's true. Well, he may have one had one peer that I think about it. Your mentor, Mia Fay. My sister? Gregory Edgeworth was very disapproving of Mr. Von Karma's techniques. That's no surprise. Von Karma is an extreme man. Forged testimonies and evidence are nothing to him. The result? He has a perfect win record in court. To beat him, Gregory Edgeworth tried all tried to call all, uh, tried to call attention to his methods. And he lost. And died in despair as if it were. I see spirit medium when Gregory Edgeworth was killed the police called on a spirit medium that was your mother Misty Fay I am Gregory Edgeworth and I have I have been killed the one who shot me was the bailiff Yanni Yogi Yet, Yogi was found innocent. 
That's when my mother left us. Everyone called her a fraud. That's right. Everyone thought she was, you see. Yet, now that I think about it, it seems the one who lied was Gregory Edgeworth's ghost. Gregory Edgeworth must have known who shot him. I don't believe it. So you're saying he falsified his testimony? That Edgeworth's dad lied to protect his son? It's only a possibility, mind you, but a possibility nonetheless. Von Karma. If it truly was Von Karma who wrote this letter, then he would know the truth. He would know that Miles Edgeworth had accidentally killed his own father. Huh? He'll say as much tomorrow in court, I should think. He'll press the point until the court finds Miles Edgeworth guilty. Oh no. But how could Von Karma know about Mr. Edgeworth's past like that? Even Mr. Edgeworth thought it was just a nightmare. Hmm, that I do not know. Yet I do know that Von Karma is both persistent and a perfectionist. He may be seeking to satisfy a grudge against Gregory Edgeworth by hurting his own son. What do you mean? It was 15 years ago. Von Karma met Gregory Edgeworth in court, and Von Karma did win. But he didn't make it through the trial unscarred. Unscarred? Okay, let's see what, what this is all about. What happened in the trial between Edgeworth's dad and Von Karma? Von Karma got the guilty verdict he wanted. He won the trial. But Gregory Edgeworth accused Von Karma of faulty ed evidence. And though he lost the trial, Mr. Edgeworth's uh, accusation stood. Faulty evidence? It was the only penalty Von Karma has ever received in his career as a prosecutor. Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow! It must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. A vacation? Yes, an unusual event for the man. That was the first and the last vacation he's taken in, in his many years of prosecuting. Really? He doesn't take vacations? Like, go to the sea? Or, uh, the mountains? Don't tell me he's never been to Europe. You have strange ideas about vacation, Maya. In any case, that was the only time he took a vacation from work. I believe the penalty upset him quite a lot. Odd, if he wanted to keep a perfect record so badly, why would he take such a long vacation? What do we do, Nick? Von Karma is going to bring up DL6. You can bet on it. What if Mr. Edgeworth pleads guilty to DL6? I won't let him. Uh, yes, Mr. Wright. I hate to say this, but even accidental murder is murder, you know. I know that. I just believe in Edgeworth's innocence. I can't believe he'd kill someone. But Nick, Mr. Edgeworth admits it himself. His father must have lied to protect him from beyond the grave. I don't care. I know he's not guilty. Hmm. Mr. Wright, if you say so, I suppose I could go check again. The police files might hold something of interest. Mr. Grossberg, thank you. I can't promise anything. In fact, I think the chances of finding something are slim. I understand. The police materials. Hmm. Let's see. Move. Go to the detention center. No move. Let's go to criminal affairs department. Okay, we're on the right track.
There's hardly anyone here. Everyone must be out looking for the old guy, Yogi. Ah, it's you. I don't think Gumshoe will be back today. He's staying out late looking for someone. Sounds like Detective Gumshoe is pounding the pavement for real. Um, we were wondering if we could check out the records room again. Well, now I can't have just anyone wandering around in there. But I guess Mr. Von Karma is in there now anyway. He can go in as long as he's in there. As he's there. Von Karma. Yes, he just arrived actually. Von Karma's in the records room. Nick, let's hurry. Okay, he's probably trying to get rid of evidence. Hmm. Dusty as always. We were only here just yesterday. I'm sure they just haven't had time to clean. Hmm. What's wrong, Nick? Nothing. I was just noticing that he isn't here. Von Karma. Okay, there's probably a missing... The DL6 is probably missing. Huh. One of the drawers here is open. Someone must have been... No, someone must have been looking in it recently. The label says unsolved cases. Evidence. Hmm. Unsolved cases. Nick! The file for DL6 is completely empty. What? What are you doing in here? Ah! He looks more scarier from the front. Von Karma! You. How do you know my name? <laughs> huh? Have we met? What? What are you saying? We see each other every day, don't we? We're Miles Edgeworth's defense team. Defense team? <laughs> I beg your pardon. You see, I rarely remember defense attorneys. They are like bugs to me. Needless things to be crushed. I can see how this guy was Edgeworth's mentor. Okay. He has an evil smile about him. I wonder if uh, he'll say anything if I present. Fool. You think I, a prosecutor, would give you a defense attorney information? Bah. Creep. say anything. Yeah, he's a professional. He will not say anything whatsoever. Whoops. Mr. Von Karma, have a look at this. Hmm. This was you, wasn't it? You instructed Yanni Yogi to commit murder. Hmm. Yanni Yogi. How many years has it been since I heard him called? I've heard him called by that name. He's a fool. I told him to burn it after he read it. Huh? So you admit it. You wrote Mr. Yogi this letter. Yes, my dear defense attorney. Thank you for taking the trouble to bring it to me. You saved me from a lot of needless hassle. Oh, what? Nick! What is that thing? A stun gun. For self-defense. Defense, usually. Indeed. 600,000 volts will course through your body like a dog touching an electric fence. 600,000... Don't worry, people don't die from it, usually. Now give me the letter. No! No! Whoa, what are you? Nick, run! Ah! Oh, 
she took the bl brunt of it. Maya! Out of my way. Ah! Uh, okay, looks like we are done. Hmm. Oh, he got us. The letter's gone, of course. And he took the DL6 evidence. All of it. Back to having no clues. Wait. Maya jumped first. Maya, is she okay? Ma- Maya. Maya, open your eyes. Uh... Maya? Huh? The letter, did he take it? Huh? Oh yeah, are you okay? I couldn't stop him. I jumped as fast as I could, but one shot from that thing knocked me out cold. I'm useless. I'm no good as a lawyer or a medium. I can't even call my sister. Not even now when we need her the most. I wish I hadn't woken up at all. Maya! Uh, there has to be some way I can help her. I better do something about her self-confidence first. Hmm. Maya? She's holding something. What is that? A bullet? DL6 incident evidence number 7 taken from the heart of Gregory Edgeworth. I remember. Von Karma was holding this when Maya jumped him. Okay. I'll prove it to you, Maya. You're most definitely not useless. I'll prove it to you in court tomorrow. To be continued. Oh, man. I wonder what he would have said if I talked to him. Maybe the same thing? This is it. Judgment Day. Actually, I think we should stop here. Yeah, I don't know what would have happened. I, I, I sh Maybe I shouldn't have showed him that thing. or I should have talked to him to see what he was going to say. I wanted to see what he'd say, but, uh, well... I guess we're this far now, and we're missing some evidence. I hope I didn't mess this up. But anyway, all right, so that was today's episode, and we will catch you next time with uh, the conclusion to this, uh, what do you call it, this trial. So, yeah, stay tuned, and we'll see ya.